Coming to you once again all the way from New York City is your favorite doctor, Doctor for Free. Today I'm going to discuss hepatitis diagnosis in Nigeria. The misconceptions, the facts, the fallacies, the half-truths and the innuendos. One of the most outstanding things is to be diagnosed with hepatitis in Nigeria. People carry it like almost like a cross. I've had people reach me, send me tests, call me that they were diagnosed with hepatitis and it has been untreated and they are still feeling the symptoms. And I think there's this boogeyman kind of scenario where people are scared shitless into thinking that it is a death sentence. For listening, let's get it straight. Hepatitis is a virus and just like Almost all viruses, there's no cure. I mean, we have things that can ameliorate them, mitigate them, you know, things that can reduce their virulence, but really, they don't have cure. And most of them do not leave lasting effects. I've seen somebody who was diagnosed with hepatitis and was told not to eat fatty food, not to eat meat, not to eat eat eggs even if this guy went out with his friends on a friday evening to chill out you'll be looking at his friends down in what you call Kobe in my language you know a concussion of you know well cooked meat with you know palatable spices and sauces down in these things with a chilled bottle of beer and they'll be moping I mean, living, living dead, because this is somebody who is used to doing this maybe once a, a month just to get life spiced up and not doing it again. That in itself will kill the person. So anyway, even in America here, not all centers run hepatitis tests. It's so special that you know, it's mostly the big center. So I have mushroom facilities in remote communities in Nigeria diagnosing people. You will not believe it. I've had a patient come to me when I was in, like, they presented to me, who was diagnosed with hepatitis somewhere just from urinalysis having protein, one protein plus. I mean, then another because the eye was just a bit yellow. I mean, if you have typhoid or malaria and there is hemolysis, you are bound to also have yellow eyes. So, majority of the diagnosis of hepatitis in people in Nigeria is wrong. I mean, you've seen a 60-year-old woman who is not promiscuous, who has not had blood transfusion, who has never even touched any injection to, be, uh, to say that uh, is a heavy drug abuser and you're diagnosing this person with hepatitis B or C. And where, from where? I just want to break it up into parts and break it down so that you understand. The most important aspects of hepatitis just span across three main categorizations. Hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. There is not a non B, there is E, but we'll concentrate on these three which are more rampant. Hepatitis A is just, you know, got through contaminated water and food. It's almost like typhoid, it's got fecal oral and it does not leave any uh, debilitating effects. Talk about hepatitis B and C. These two run the same course as HIV. You get them from infected needles. It's blood to blood contact that gives you the uh, contraction of the disease. So infected needles, blood transfusions, sex, uh, hepatitis B could go three ways. You could just do like hepatitis A, acute illness, brief, runs its course and it's gone. That is actually will give you core immunity. Then there's also the fulminant pathway where because fulminant and this one can be cataclysmic. 
then there's this chronic pathway where it becomes, you know, your body recovers from the acute effects, you know, walls it up, becomes chronic, could lead you to cirrhosis all the time. You know, an infinitesimal part of it could also lead to hepatoma. But this is just almost oh, far fetched, but possible. Then there's hepatitis C also, the same means of contraction, but mostly runs a chronic cause, leading to cirrhosis and maybe also to hepatoma. Just like most viruses, there's no cure, but you could have, you treat symptomatically. There's fever, you give uh, NSAIDs and all that. If there's nausea, you give antiemetics, you give flus and all that through the acute phase, and then, you know. You could take any of those courses I said and I enumerated earlier. So, for somebody to now tell somebody that had hepatitis not to eat fatty food, not to eat meat, not to eat eggs, or even drink occasional chilled beer, uh, is just ridiculous to say the least. And you should not be going around. I had somebody that sent me a text two weeks ago that he has been treating hepatitis for eight months and it's not going away. Seven. Please, that is a misdiagnosis. The real hepatitis is not something you should carry like an albatross walking around. You are heady looking and you're telling me you have hepatitis. Are you a carrier? And who did the test? Who ran it? Which facility? How did I mean? Did they diagnose you with a positive protein in the urine? Or what? This thing is so, at times I find it difficult to reconcile these presentations. Remember, my program is to challenge you, to teach you the rudiments, so that when you go, you can actually argue with your healthcare professional. It is your right to know. I like what they do over there, where there's grandfatherism, the doctor thinks it's all knowing and patients are just to jump if they say, if that's to ask how high if they say jump. It's not how it is here in the U.S. And we could do better over there. Patients have a right to be educated. Hepatitis diagnosis in Nigeria and the dietary prescriptions thereafter leaves a lot to be desired. So for somebody to give you all these chronic symptoms as if they are due to hepatitis and then giving you chronic medications, some of them so fanciful but exorbitant, it is just outrageous. I've had people calling me, mentioning names of special vitamins and all that they are giving to treat hepatitis as if it's the um, messiah to hepatitis. And then after taking all these things for year, for months, for weeks, even for years, spending huge sums of money, they still have whatever symptoms they are having, which in the first place wasn't due to hepatitis. So this is to educate you not to fall victim to such chicanery. In real diagnosis of hepatitis, the acute phase will come, you'll be treated symptomatically, you know, it takes whatever cause and it's done. There is nothing, you don't keep having chronic knee pain, thigh pain, itching, all those manufacturers' symptoms from hepatitis. And then to be bombarding you with all these costly medications for treatment. It's just wrong. In America here, there's been research that progressed into using interferons to treat hepatitis C. I mean, it, I doubt they will be using that in Nigeria because of the exorbitant cost. So this is my prescription for you. 
Do not let anybody railroad you into not eating meat, fish, eggs, you know, dining, occasional beer here and there. Just because you were diagnosed with hepatitis at a point. For you know, you could just be somebody who is already immune. You were conferred immunity through the infection. And you actually stand in good stead to combat the disease more than somebody who was not exposed. Don't take dietary prescriptions. And don't indulge in all those medications they give you that do nothing for you in the long run. Don't even have that crushing feeling that you're sick. Because if you happen to have hepatitis and you are a chronic alcoholic, you need to either completely cut it off, which is more preferable, or drastically reduce it. If you're a smoker, you also advise to drastically reduce it, but preferably cut it off. Those are the two things I will tell you about in this issue of hepatitis. I mean, due to shortage of time, I cannot go extensively into everything, but you can chat with me, you can ask questions, you can email me, do whatever to know more. Because the topic is extensive. I was just trying to bring out the salient points here. So that those of you who are walking around now feeling that you are sufferers can be emancipated enough to know that plethora of symptoms is a phantom. Thank you for listening. Join me to give this platform. Share, click, subscribe, view and be part of this innovative medium. I might sound iconoclastic at times, almost heretical, but I mean medically heretical, but this is to challenge you. Having been in two clans in the United States where I see things work, and of course, actively involved in Nigeria, where I've been running free medical clinic for more than 20 years and uh, you know, going for medical missions and have been inundated with these things that I'm seeing. This is my avenue to give back, to teach. Because like I said, 80% of poor healthcare over there is due to lack of medical education. And medical education, I mean, of the populace, not the medical community, about the rudiments of their ailments. Unlike what obtains over here, where people come to me fully informed, fully prepared, even at times more informed than we medical staff. And that is why we engage in continuing medical education at all levels, different courses to take and others so as to stay afloat and to also be contemporary. Thank you for listening.